Welcome to video number three of the Cyanotype series. There are many ways that one can go about managing a digital negative. You have the very basic and simple workflows, and then you have the more technical workflows that involve the creation of step wedges, the use of Photoshop scripts, actions, and presets. No way is a better way as what matters most is what works best for you. And with any given workflow, it can always be pushed further for improvement. Hi everybody and welcome to the video on the digital negative. I first want to state that some of you just might be a little disappointed because I really do not do anything that's special. A lot of you have asked me what it is that I do and I use very basic and simple steps. Although I wanted to get this video out there sooner than now, I was a little bit afraid that I might lose everybody uh, once I just put up the digital negative. And so I had put other videos up there, which I hope that you were able to view and I also hope that they were helpful for you. And another thing is that I decided to break this, the subject of the digital negative into a series of videos. First of all, I want to apologize because I'm not sure how this is going to go. I've never done anything like this before. I'm not really a Photoshoppy, Photoshoppy person. So trying to do the setup, although I'm sure people think it's probably so easy for me. I just had a hard time trying to get this to look right. So I'm going to try my best. And if any time, um, you know, after you watch this video installment, you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. So first I'm going to start off by saying these are my personal basic steps. These are the steps that I use and I'm going to name them first and then I'm going to go to, into a few examples. Not all the images that I uh, work with or plan to use for the cyanotype process will need all of these steps. It's all going to be dependent on, you know, how, I guess how much help it needs or how well the image is on its own and only then I can determine whether or not I will need all the steps um, as I go through and assess the, the image. So number one step is duplicating the layer. The first step I will do is duplicate the layer um, and kind of make an assessment of okay what I might need to fix. And in the case that maybe I do see things that I need to fix, I will create a new blank layer. In this new blank layer, I will use it, say for example, there is a pimple on the face, there's a, like, bad flyaway hairs that just oh, have to get out of there. Um, anything like that, very minor little things. And then I will merge the layers. I will press Control. Alt Shift E. I'm not too sure what it is on a Mac, but on a PC it's Control Alt Shift E, and this will merge all the flares below into one layer on the top. After that, I will then convert it into black and white. There are many ways you can convert your image into black and white. I just use the Photoshop black and white tool, and then I will invert the image. I will invert it and then that's where I have my digital negative. Here is where I do most of the work and fine tuning it as best as possible. I will then adjust the contrast. After inverting the image I will either add contrast or I might even try and lower the contrast and this does happen especially with some of my photographs because I, I don't shoot anything else but portraits. And so we're dealing with a face and, you know, when you're converting that into a digital negative, oftentimes that face will be a little bit too high in contrast for the cyanotype process. But I'll get into that. 
And then of course I will sharpen the image and I sharpen the image using the high pass filter. I think it's one of the best ways, at least for me, from the different ways that I've tried of sharpening an image for the cyanotype process. And then I will sometimes, depend upon the image, I will add texture to it. You see, in the beginning I used uh, a lot of the hot press paper, the hot press paper being very flat surfaced, and I started to add texture to the images, not all of them, but some of them, uh, when I was using the hot press paper, or when I do use it, sometimes I, I will add a little bit of texture. I'll show you how to do that. And then we have the last step, which is flipping the image horizontally. I know people might do it in the beginning, people might do it in the middle, I just do it at the end. Before I do it any horizontal shifting, I make sure everything is all smooth and glorious, and then I will flip the image, and then I will save it, size it for whatever size of paper that I'm going to be using, and that is the basic steps that I use. I will mention again that sometimes I do not use all of these steps, and sometimes there might be different steps. So, get ready guys for the first image. Okay, I'm sure probably some of you might have been laughing at me because I realized that the screen was not straight. It was kind of crooked. <laughs> and uh, I guess trying to focus on so many different things and not having done this before, I just really didn't take note till after. And I just was not going to do it all over again. So get your laughs out, we'll get started. So this is the first image, and this image is a very simple image, and I chose it because I think it's the best way to start. And it also will be a way for you to see generally what it is I look for. Again, I shoot portraits 99% of the time, and my portraits have faces that are filling that frame. I don't have to deal with any kind of busy backgrounds because, of, again, I wouldn't want a busy background because I want the attention to be all focused on the face. Even if I have a portrait where they're uh, a lot further away from the viewer, you know, even then I will make sure that my backgrounds are more or less a solid color white, black, red, green, whatever it is. I like to work that way, avoid any distractions to the face, the portrait. So this image is an image where I will not necessarily have to use all my steps. So when we're looking at our basic steps, and I'll just open it for a second, we will duplicate the image, which is what I have done. Sorry about that. And then we will create a new blank layer, which is something that I did do. And then I did merge the layers. Um, I didn't bother showing you the create a new blank layer only because, you know, it, this was an image shot on film. And there were just some dust marks and little markings that I just simply removed. It was very quick and easy. I didn't think it was something to really waste your time with. And then, of course, when we're looking at step three, we're merging the layers. So right now is to invert our image. So I'm going to invert the image. I can clearly see right away where my issue is. My issue is all here. All of this black stuff. This is where my issue is. Now, when I remove this inversion, we can see how we have detail all around the nose. We can see the nose fully. We can see the lips, we can see the eyes. And this is my number one focus with my portraits. I want my cyanotype print to look like this. I don't want to lose any of this depth. I want it to look exactly like this. And with the cyanotype, if you are not careful with your highlights, which is all this. I'm just going to shift here a little bit and just mention black turns to white and white turns to blue in the cyanotype process. 
So as soon as I make this inversion, I'm looking and I don't see her nose. Her nose is completely gone. I want to get that back. So how will I approach this? Now I, I know that I have to bring down that contrast in the face. And I just want to mention, looking at it again as an original image, we see that there's a little bit of hot spots here already. But as an original image, it works. It does not really blind you in any way or take away from the actual image as a whole. But as soon as we turn it and we invert it, we see a huge, huge problem. So in my portraits, when I invert it, this is what I look for. I look to see how my highlights are on the face. So what is my next step? My next step is to fix this contrast. The contrast is just way too high. So what I have done here is I've opened my levels and I've made my changes to the contrast. All I did guys was play up and down with my mid-tone slider and as you can see it's bringing in that detail back. Just my mid-tone slider here. That's all I'm dealing with here. Just the mid-tones. Bringing that back so now I see that nose is shining through. You want to be wary not to go too much. You'll then start to get some really funny business going on here and you don't want that. You don't want that. So you have to be watchful. All I did was take my mid-tones and just bring it down. I still know that I need to bring this contrast even lower. So what I will go in again, I will go into a levels again and I'll do a second fix. My fix here again, I'm playing with my mid-tones. And I'm playing with my mid-tones. Again, I'm bringing it down a little bit more. And I've added just a little bit of highlights. So now this is my final digital negative. I just want to go back with the fixing that I did using the levels. You're probably wondering why didn't I just do it on one levels layer. I realized on my first levels layer from this to this, making more of an adjustment, I'm going to fall into a weird place. So here I am now where I was at my max and now I'm bringing it down even some more. And we're just getting way crazy here. So sometimes even doing a step in a case like this, you will have to do two steps and not just trying to do it all on one step. It sometimes just will not end up working out. And how do I know this? I know this through doing it and doing it and just instinctively get to know what I'm going to use and if I need to break it down. Can I do it on one layer? These things I cannot tell you whether you should do it or not. It's something that you're going to eventually figure out and know. But this is a perfect example to show you that sometimes when you're trying to make a fix and it's a big fix and it's a large area, you may just need to break down that fixing on two layers. Let me just fix that because when I was playing with the dials here, I moved it out of place. Sorry about that. When fiddling around with the dials, I uh, probably didn't put them back where they should have gone <laughs> so that you'd be able to clearly see the progression of where I started with the digital negative and where I ended with the digital negative. So let's do a little review here. So this is where I did my first initial inversion and then this is my first levels. This is the first fix that I did which all I did was use my mid-tone slider and go down to a point where it was just at the brink of going all wacky. So you want to watch that. 
Now, before I go a little further, which I forgot to mention before, and I apologize, my first levels layer, where I made my first initial adjustment, this is a global adjustment. I'm looking at the whole image and making my adjustment. Okay, so we're from here, and it's a global adjustment. Now, if I go here and go on my mask, you'll see it's affecting the whole image. The whole image. Now, the second levels layer, which I've added now, which is bringing me to where I want to be, this is for the specific areas that I want to affect. So I'll put on my mask, and as you'll see, I've just done the face area. I've removed it off the lips, I've removed it off the background, and I just took a little bit off here. I didn't want to lose too much here. And this is my second layer of fixing with levels. Just to kind of make that clear because I did not mention that in the beginning in case it might be confusing. So one last look. This is where I started. This is my first levels, which is global. And this is my second levels, which is specific. And this is where we end here. We end right here with this fixed digital negative, a digital negative that I'm happy with, and I know that I will get that detail that I want to make sure I have that will give me the depth that I want to see in my cyanotype print. So let's move on to our next step. The next step is sharpening. And as I've mentioned in my list of basic steps, I use the high pass filter for this. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to merge my layers again. So I'm going to go control alt shift E and you'll see right there that my new layer has popped up on top. So this layer on top here has all these layers combined onto one layer. And it's a good idea to do this because if you make an error here, you can just delete it and restart back by replacing all of these up on a new layer and start over again. In case you're not aware, I don't know. So we have now merged our layers merged all visible layers on one layer. And the next step I will do, I will go into Filter, Other, and High Pass. And I'll open that dialog up. Okay, so we have a little bit of a number here that ain't going to work. I am going to bring the slider all the way down to zero. It was set there probably from something else I was doing and testing out something. So this is how we will start with the high pass filter. We'll start at zero, 0 0.1 as it is indicated here. And we will see that we have this gray layer. My objective is to move this slider to the right just until I start to see edges pull through this gray layer. Now I am just going to go a little bit more than I should just for you to see what's happening here. In case you've never used this tool, you might, you might know already about this. And this is what's happening as I'm going, I'm going, this, little, this, this image is pushing through that gray layer. Now this is obviously too far. We can see a haloing of the image and you don't want to go there. You want to get to your max, but a max that will make sense with your image. So I'm going to pull this back to zero again. And I'm going to do it by pushing this forward. I'm going to just keep watch on that layer. And I'm 
going to keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, and around 5.5 seems to be right for me. So we can see the edges of the lip, the nose, we can see the eyelashes, the eye, the brows, even the skin, which I love. Everything is peeking out of this gray layer. I'm not sure if you guys are seeing this clearly, but I hope so. Now I will click on OK. And now we see that this layer is still remaining as a gray layer. And our choice is now is to go into our layers palette, click on the arrow, and you will see we have different blending modes that pop up. And here is where you can define the amount of sharpness you want on your image. So we have soft light, which is the one I mostly use for portraits. And I'm going to click this off. Hope you can see the difference. And now I'm going to click it on. See how it's popped out? Off and on again. And there is my sharpness for my cyanotype print. Now you can play with these blending modes and I will change this blending mode to hard light. See how much more of a sharpness we got here? It's really uh, a lot stronger than I would want, but maybe that's something that you might want. And again, we can go in our blending modes and we could use overlay and we will get something different. Vivid light, we will get something different. So all of these blending modes here, overlay, soft light, hard light, vivid light is not really something that I use, but it can be an option, you never know. These are the three that I will look at. Now, soft light I will use 99% of the time. Hard light is when you want something a little bit more punchy, you want to really accentuate some of that sharpness. And overlay is kind of the in-between. So you have soft light as being the lesser and hard light as being the more. -er. <laughs> so I'm just going to click this back on to soft light. And again, I will click it on. Off, sorry. And I'll click it on. And there you have the sharpness. So... Be aware with that tool, you do not want to go overboard where you'll start to see haloing around the areas and you will most likely get that uh, on your print. It might just show in there. So you want to make sure your edges stay pretty much clean as you see it. It's just, just bumped up a little bit more. So this is my final digital negative. I'm happy with it. I'm seeing the detail where I need to see it, where I want to see it. But I want to also include, which I should have from the very beginning, you need to start off with an image that is well exposed. It is very important. It'll save you a lot of headache later. We can resort and say, I'll leave it up to Photoshop, but let me tell you something. When you get that right in camera, as close as humanly possible to 100%, you will have less headaches later, techniques that you want to apply to your image. It'll be a much smoother experience. So that is really, in fact, number one. Number two, making sure that that depth remains in the face. I want to see it exactly how my original image looked like. And... Here is our cyanotype print. Unfortunately, scanning doesn't do justice, but this is the portrait as a cyanotype print. We still do have a little bit of this extra highlight here, but it's something that I already saw in my original image. Some things you just cannot bring back, but you can minimize. We can see we have complete depth in that face. It's all there, guys. It's everything is there. This is my important thing that I need to make sure I want to obtain that depth. 
the reality of this face. I don't want to lose anything. And when you're not careful, you can lose depth in the face very easily. It does not take much. And there you have it. This is one example. This is one way that I will approach a digital negative with an image particularly like this. I hope you found this to be insightful, useful, and helpful.